Um, all right, so now I'd like to give an example for, of a very simple uh, routing algorithm. This is called Trickle. Um, and the central idea here is that I have some kind of shared state which I want to distribute across the whole mesh. So I, I just want to send some information to all of the nodes, maybe to all of the sensors. Um, I want to update their software, for example. And uh, in the end, all of the uh, devices should have the new state. And the central goal is to avoid these kind of broadcast storms, which I already mentioned, that every, every device uh, starts to broadcast again and again. And at some point, the entire network is flooded and doesn't really transfer any data anymore. Um, so the uh, basic idea behind Trickle is that uh, every node listens for other transmissions. And uh, if these transmissions suggest that the network is already consistent, so that every node has the same state, then I keep quiet. Otherwise, I send out my own state. So for example, um, I have a node A, which sends a broadcast. OK, I have software version 1.0. Um, and this is picked up by a node B, which already has version 2.0, for example. Um, that, then node B basically knows node A needs an update because it's not yet at the most current state. And then uh, node B broadcasts on its own, sends out version 2, maybe of the configuration or whatever. And node A can then pick that up, pick that up and integrate it into its own um, uh, configuration. Okay, so uh, let's briefly go through how this algorithm actually works. Um, we have three, three parameters. We have a, a time interval and a constant k. This is the redundancy constant, which tells you basically how often the nodes should, be, should uh, transmit even if it looks like that the network is already consistent. So first of all, what's done is that uh, a random inter time interval is selected somewhere between the minimum and the maximum that's designated here. And um, then I start this timer. Okay. And then I just, the node in the first place just listens basically for incoming transmission. Um, I also need a counter C, and every time I re receive a consistent transmission, for example, with the same, that means with the same version of the data which I already have, then I just increase that counter. When I'm getting an inconsistent transmission, then I reset the timer to the minimum time allowed and restart it. Um, and when uh, the timer reaches this time t, somewhere in the second half, and uh, the number of consistent transmissions I've received is below the threshold, then I transmit my own state. Otherwise, when the timer is expired without me having to transmit, um, then I just increase the interval and start again. So I think the explanation will, won't do that much good right now. I think this is really something where you have to look at the, the slide afterwards and go through it step by step for yourself. The basic idea is that um, I don't immediately transmit anything uh, when I get a, a, a transmission, even if I know now I, don't, I, I would have to send out an update, I still wait for some, uh, sp some specific time before I actually send the data. And if in the meantime, some other node sends an update already, then I don't have to do anything basically. So um, there's quite a lot of, uh, in, the, in the paper up here, there's actually quite a lot of analysis of how this, uh, influences the, uh, the network load and so on and how long it will take for a network of a specific size to, to reach consistency again. But uh, the algorithm in itself is actually 
quite simple, it can be implemented in a very small amount of code. And the, um, yeah, the big advantage is that it, will, uh, it works almost as well as just broadcasting information all the time. It's just a little bit slower and it will save a lot of, uh, of bandwidth actually because the nodes just wait a little bit until they actually transmit. Yeah. Yeah, in this case, the, so the, the goal of the trickle algorithm is that you have a global state that you want to want all nodes to have, like for example, configuration. Just uh, you have 100 nodes and they should all get uh, a configuration update. And the trickle algorithm is for distributing that configuration update to all nodes. So all nodes are in the same state. Exactly. So. You, so in theory, it's like this: uh, you have just you just need to update one node and tell it, okay, now you have a new version, and then that change will slowly propagate through the network until all nodes have the new version of of the configuration or maybe of the software update. But in the end, all nodes should have the same the same data again. Mm. Um, I, in, in this case, because they are simply too complex, because these, these uh, sensor nodes, for example, they are really uh, very small processors, like with maybe 128 kilobytes of, of uh, memory and uh, just a single core with 10 megahertz. And so all of these, um, these protocols, like, like BitTorrent, for example, they're much more complex and they would basically use up all the resources which these re really tiny sensors have. So uh, it's much more efficient to use a very simple protocol like this trickle and then use that to, to uh, distribute the, the data, basically. Okay, so uh, let's continue. Um, now I'd like to briefly look into how um, personal area networks work. We discussed this briefly already. Now I'd like to look at more into the technical aspects. So uh, the very first implementations used infrared. Um, later, and what also is currently used is Bluetooth. Um, the problem is if you want some kind of communication with uh, your headphones, for example, or your mouse. Uh, Bluetooth is perfectly fine for that, but it has quite a high power draw, especially a problem on mobile devices, of course. And um, you often need to put in a pin number or something to, to actually make the connection. And for, for simpler devices, uh, there's this new um, yeah, new specification or relative new specification, Bluetooth Low Energy. Sometimes it's also called Bluetooth Smart. We already talked about this briefly. And uh, what's currently planned is that this should also support uh, small to medium-sized mesh networks with uh, um, the Bluetooth protocols. Um, yeah, I think this was mostly already covered in lecture three, so um, there's basically two incompatible parts of Bluetooth. Just about any modern device can do both. Um, the important part is that you can also split out this low energy part and implement just that. And then you can put that into, into some kind of sensor device and have a lot less complexity and a lot less um, hardware basically you need for, for supporting this this uh, low energy part, then when you would have to support the entire Bluetooth standard, which is, I don't know, 3,000 pages or something like that. Um, so the, uh, oops, sorry. C the uh, idea really is to optimize this for low power rates, maybe at most one megabit, 
this would actually be uh, already quite challenging. For example, if you want uh, to do a high quality audio stream, then one megabit might already uh, start to be an issue uh, because you of course also have, have packet loss and so on. Um, so it's definitely more suited for sensors with really small amounts of data, but you can get a much better battery lifetime out of it. In, in general, the goal is to, to get at least one year of, of battery lifetime. So um, one important aspect is that you have two roles here central and peripheral. And um, peripherals can broadcast to everybody in the area and they can also set up a dedicated channel to a central device and um, yeah, basically make a direct connection to that one central device. Um, and central devices, on the other hand, they can open up connections to one or more peripheral devices and also get specific notifications when a value changes. So you don't have to transmit one and the same value over and over again, uh, but you just send a notification if the sensor value actually changes, for example. So um, the central role is supported actually on most Android devices now since uh, 4.3. The hardware supports it anyway. Anything that was built in the last uh, three or four years will support it. Um, interesting is that the peripheral support is a lot uh, less, uh, uh, less good <laughs> um, on uh, Android and iOS. So on iOS, you need at least iOS 6. And on Android, uh, you need at least Android 5 and a very specific device. So it, basically reliably only works on some Nexus devices and some Motorola devices. That's kind of a problem. Um, of course, uh, this is a, a bit of a specific scenario. So in, th in general, you would want your, your phone to be a central device, which can open connections to sensors, but there are also use cases where it might make sense that your phone itself becomes a peripheral that can, for example, broadcast to all other devices in the area. And that is still not very well supported, um, at least on Android, which may be a problem in some scenarios. Um, we have roughly three different different types of complexity of devices. So we have uh, the, the simplest devices we can have are so-called beacons. They just send out static broadcasts at a, at a fixed interval. Um, you may have heard of iBeacons, which is the Apple implementation of this. These are simply um, devices which have a 128-bit ID and they broadcast this every five seconds maybe. And if you have uh, then a compatible smartphone with a suitable app, then you can look up the, for example, the positions of that uh, beacon in a database and it can tell you roughly where you are, for example, in a, in a big store. So that's the, the main usage scenario here. Um, next um, complexity class would be uh, sensors which uh, either broadcast or unicast some kind of sensor data. Um, the simplest sensors would actually broadcast it just to everybody who can, can receive the transmission. The more complex sensors um, open up a, a connection and use unicast to send their data to one specific device again. Um, Important here is that you have lots of different profiles already predefined. So for example, there's a, a profile for heart rate sensors, for uh, temperature sensors and so on. And if you have a suitable app on your phone, then you can actually access data from any sensor that follows that profile. Um, and there's also this support to uh, this feature to support notifications. So you don't have to ask all the time for the new data or um, get constantly get the same value. All of this is designed to save battery. Bluetooth Low Energy actually isn't so much designed for synchronous 
bi-directional communication where you send a request, get a response, send a request, get a response, and so on. That's not the primary use case because that would again use up a lot of battery. Um, so the, the bi there is a, a feature for bi-directional communication, but that's mostly for just, for example, setting the update rate of the sensor or adjusting some parameters. It, the, the primary uh, design scenario is that you have some sensor which sends data when there is new data available and otherwise the, the, uh, the radio channel basically stays quiet. Um, so I've already mentioned this, uh, the, the really primary optimization goal of this low energy Bluetooth is of course to conserve energy, to uh, have better, better battery lifetime. And so one example would be this NRF system on a chip, which uh, we've also been using in the lab for, for some Bluetooth low energy experiments. Um, and if you power this with a button cell and have it uh, send out one broadcast every second, then you will get about one year of, of battery lifetime, which is really quite good. Um, so you can, of course, lower the, the um, transmission interval uh, or increase it, then the, the battery lifetime will change accordingly. Um, what becomes also important is that uh, we already talked about this in the context of smartphones, of course, that you can have um, multiple ind independent peripherals on the chip. For example, the, the radio part, of course, and if you don't actually need them, then you can turn them off individually to ser save even more power. But that, of course, depends highly on what kind of, of application you actually have. <clears throat> 